and give thanks to the Lord that we have come again before him to be blessed by him give praise to him who has brought you again to his presence for the glory of his name thank him who has been teaching us his word day after day Jesus' name we pray. Our Father, we have come again to you. And I pray that you will take your place as usual to open the eyes of your children to know your eternal truth. Your word says, we shall know the truth and the truth shall make us free. I'm requesting that the knowledge of truth will bring freedom from sin through ignorance in Jesus' name. Your children will be encouraged to invest into righteousness so they can have the reward of life. Both from God and through God from their fellow men. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you once again for being attentive and zealous for the word of God. The Lord bless you with the knowledge of himself and of his eternal truth in Jesus' name. I'm talking to you on, you will be rewarded according to your works. You will be rewarded according to your works. The good that a man does for God's name and to fellow men is for himself. The evil that a man does against God's name and his fellow men is for himself. There is a law in scripture, the law of retribution, the law of recompense, the law of sowing and reaping, which we shall consider to see the truth of this statement. I had a story of a beggar somewhere. I can't remember where, but it's in the northern part. When he comes to you to give him something, he will tell you, give me something. If you give it to me, you are doing yourself good. If you don't give it to me, it is all for yourself. This man understood the law of sowing and reaping. That the kindness you show shall provoke kindness to your life. The good works you do shall generate good works for your life. God made the world so as though even without his intervention, this work automatically, although he intervenes. Let's look at scripture. In Proverbs chapter 24, verse 11 and 12. Proverbs 24, 
Verse 11 and 12. If thou forbear to deliver them that are drawn unto death, and those that are ready to be slain, if thou sayest, Behold, we knew it not, doth not he that pondereth the heart consider it? And he that keepeth thy soul, doth not he know it? And shall he not, and shall not he render to every man according to his words? If a situation come demanding your mercy to save a soul, to bless a soul, to deliver a soul, and you do not do it, the person might be facing death and you are in the right position to deliver him. There is a truth about the matter that if you speak that truth, you will deliver him. There is an action that you, should, that you are to take. If you take that action, he will be delivered from death. Maybe as a medical practitioner, you know what you will do that will keep this person from dying, that will keep this woman from dying in childbearing. You know what you should have done, but you sit down and say it in your heart. Behold, I, did not, I knew it not. I don't know what to do. That's why I didn't know what to do. That's why he died. That's why she died. I didn't know what to do. The, the Lord is saying, does not he that pondereth the heart consider it? He that reads your heart, he that knows your heart, does she not consider it? And he that keepeth thy soul, doth not he know it? The one that has been keeping you until you are 40, does she not know it? That is out of a wicked heart you did that. It is out of a lazy heart you did that. That you needed money before you would do the good. Did he not do it? And shall not he render to every man according to his works? God is involved in the matter. God is involved in the matter. You might say, by the way, he's not a Christian. Is he not a creature of God? You can give any reason that that person is he not worthy of your mercy. Does not God, who has kept you this, all these years, no? Will he not pay you back? Surely, the good that a man does shall return to him in a reward. The evil that a man does shall return to him in a reward. God will do it. In the book of Jeremiah chapter 25, verse 14, Jeremiah, Chapter 25, verse 14. For many nations and great kings shall serve 
themselves of them also. And I will recompense them according to their deeds and according to the works of their own hands. Concerning the children of Israel, because of their disobedience, many nations shall exploit them. Many nations will serve themselves, exploit their wealth, will make them servants to themselves. That's what God said. And I will recompense them according to their deeds and according to the works of their own hands. Two things here. According to the deeds of the children of Israel, I'm going to pay them. According to their wickedness, I am going to pay them. I will recompense them. Yes, that is why I am making many nations to serve themselves, to exploit them. But it goes also to say, those nations that I give permission to exploit the children of Israel, to oppress them in reward for their evil lives, if those nations go beyond normal and go to the extreme of evil against these children of Israel, I will pay them according to their works. The Lord spoke to Nebuchadnezzar. My people offended and I brought you up to carry them into captivity. And you ill-treated them badly. You went beyond normal. You went beyond normal. To treat them madly. All right. I'm going to punish you for that. I'm going to pay you back for the wickedness you are showing. Somebody offended. Maybe a child. And you beat the child beyond normal. You have crossed the bar. And God has noticed wickedness in your heart. He said he will pay you back. That you dealt without pity to the child. He, the father of the child, will pay you back. That is what the Lord is saying. He rewards iniquity. So be careful with your life. Even when you're dealing with somebody that has done bad, deal carefully. Deal according to the acceptable measure. Don't go to excess wickedness. Don't go to, don't go to doing evil, wickedness now. Excess wickedness, I mean, don't go to handling the matter beyond normal. Because God will be angry. God will be provoked against you. In Matthew chapter 16, verse 27. Matthew chapter 16, verse 27. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. He every man according to his works. According to what you are doing. According to what you have done. The Lord will reward you. This is the promise of end time. When the Lord shall come. When the Lord shall come. 
People shall be rewarded according to their works. You may be thinking, the reward of the pastor will be greater than everybody's reward. That's your thought. Has he done more than the common person among us? Does? Has the pastor worked more than you? Or you work more than him? The pastor or your leader is like the head boy, the head girl in the school. Yes, does the head boy, the head girl, pass exam above the normal student because he's a head boy? He is given authority over others. Does he pass his exam above other students? That's the question. Because the main thing is to study and pass. Does the head boy, the head girl in the school, score above others because of position? Or is possible all can beat him down? Who have studied more than him? <clears throat> Who have done more than him? Sure. It is clear. Those, there are those who may do more than him. Except he is a studious man himself. Studious boy himself. That studies well and works hard. Apart from being head boy. Then he will score well. It is the same. This pastor that you are thinking will have more reward because he's the leader. Does he have equivalent righteousness? Does he serve with sincerity of heart? Does he serve according to the truth of God? Does he employ the grace God has given him all the grace. Does he serve without murmuring? Does he not do evil in his service? Is he holy and righteous while leading others? This is what determines the place, the reward he will have of in heaven before God. That he is the leader, that he is the pastor, doesn't mean anything. Because there are many pastors that will not even go to heaven. Not to talk about the reward. Heaven, they will not be there. Because they will not qualify. Why? The life they live has not qualified them for heaven. Don't therefore envy somebody because he's a leader. Say, is it because you're a leader that you're doing me this? Is it because you're a leader that you're oppressing me like this? Is it because uh, you're a leader? No. That that you will pity him. So this man will not receive anything from the Lord. May not even make heaven. So that you don't think to limit your life by the standard of any pastor. Go beyond him. You are not the leader, but you can score above him by your righteousness, by your holiness. When the Lord comes, he will reward every man according to his works. Again, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13 to 15. Second Corinthians chapter 11 verse 13 to verse 15. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, 
transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. These wicked ministers have a very terrible end. You think they are prospering. You think they are enjoying. It's a terrible life they are living. The reward of their life is waiting for them. If they think about that, it is quick. The quick. Because of the reward of iniquity. A story was told of a rich man, very rich man, that revealed himself to someone that envied his riches, respected his riches, considered him a great man in the society. When this man saw the honor, the envy, the awe that these others was exercising, he said, I will tell you something. You see my riches? I will tell you something. He just removed the cup upon his head. He removed it. And maggots were moving around his head. He covered it. You see the riches? You see this? Can you take this for riches? That is it. Can you take this? The judgments that are coming upon these false teachers. Too much. Too much. You will not bother about their jets. You will not bother about their mansions. You will not. You will not. Because the reward of covenant with Satan. The demand of Satan from them. Satan is a merciless master. The demand. For them to exercise the power they are exercising, they pay a lot and will pay a lot. They pay a lot to Satan in wickedness and restlessness and God will make them pay a lot in judgment. Their end shall be according to their works. So, it tells you, if you live a good life, you shall reap the good of life. If you live an evil life, you shall reap the evil of life. Yes, in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 14 and verse 15. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 14 and 15. Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil. The Lord reward him according to his works. Of whom be thou were also, for he had greatly withstood our words. This man did me much evil. He will not go scot free. He will not go scot free. By the evil he has done. So the evil children do to their parents receive reward from God. The Lord will reward them. If your, your parents may not even pronounce the reward. Judgment. 
it will come automatic because God has said so. That this wickedness you have done to your father, this wickedness you have done to your mother, that causes the old man to live in regret, that causes the old woman to live in tears, the God of humanity will reward you. Will reward you. Everybody be careful with Alexander the coppersmith. It's an evil man. The Lord will reward him. What did Zechariah say on King Jewash when they were stoning him to death? He said, the Lord consider it. The Lord look upon it. Was it well with Jewash? Was it well with the princes? That is the God we are serving. If you are here for evil, you are going up and down. All you are doing is evil. God will reward you according to your works. Both now and hereafter. After your death. The time of reward will come. When you plant a tree, it does, it does not bear fruit immediately. It takes time to grow. It is allowed to even spread forth branches. It takes time to produce fruit before it is harvested. So also, you may be allowed by God. And you say, hey, yes, I'm still there. You will surely be rewarded. You will surely be rewarded. You don't have a good end. Say unto a wicked man, it shall not be well with him. For he shall eat the fruit of his evil life. That's the law of recompense. The law of sowing and reaping. The law of retribution. It is give and take. Why don't you sow a good future for yourself by doing good now? Why don't you repent and plead with God to show you mercy? For the evil you have already done. You are rejoicing now. A growing girl. Because you have body shape. You are beating up and down among boys. And you are, receive, you are receiving praises. Your tomorrow is not good. You are going to be looking like an old woman. A scattered woman. Woman with kwashako. Your beauty will vanish because you spoiled it in your youth with boys, with men. That is it. Whatever a man sows, he shall also reap. In Revelation chapter 18, verse 6 and 7. Revelation chapter 18. Verse 6 and verse 7. Reward her even as she rewarded you. And double unto her, double according to her works. In the cup which she had filled, fill it, fill to her, double. How much she had glorified herself and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow. Give her. For she said in her heart, I sit a queen and am no widow and shall see no sorrow. Mm. You, queen, queen in witchcraft, your sorrow is very deep sorrow because the reward that is coming on you is terrible. You are the one initiating these small children. 
You are the one giving them biscuit, giving them this, to take them to Satan. And they are celebrating you. They will come and moon at your life. When the God of these children you are spoiling rises up to deal with you, even Satan will run away from you. He cannot do anything. The revelation showed that when God struck T.B. Joshua and he was to die, he was looking for help, like somebody wallowing in the water. Help me, help me. He gave signal, call to Satan. Satan said, that one is beyond me. We cannot come to where you are. The hand dealing with you is superior hand. When God shall show anger on your witchcraft, You will know it when it shall come to pass. Except you repent. Now they're celebrating you. Oh, mommy, mommy. Oh, mommy, mommy. You will suffer it. Oh, daddy, 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 daddy. You're thinking you are anybody. For wickedness? Oh, no. Do hands join in hands. However, they seal around you, holding hands so that nobody can march through. There's no way you can live unpunished, unjudged, untormented, unrewarded. There's no way. No defense from the devil. It's only it's an appointed time. We're waiting for it. That is it. That's, see the scripture. Reward her. Even as she rewarded you in evil. And double unto her. Double. Many cry. My, my judgment is greater than my sin. Sure. Sure. Your judgment will be greater than your sin. When you invest into a business. Are you not expecting that the money you reap should be higher than your investment? So, it's an investment. You sow. That's why the judgment that is coming is higher than your sin. Yeah. And double unto her, double according to her works in the cup which she had filled for others. Filled to her double. How much she had glorified herself and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow. Give her. This is what God will do himself. For she said in her heart, I sit a queen. And I'm no widow, widow, and shall see no sorrow. Who can do me what? Creator will do you what? Creator will do it. In Revelation chapter 20, verse 12 and 13, and I saw the, the dead, small and great, Stand before God. And the books were opened. And another book was opened. Which is the book of life. And the dead were judged. Out of those things. Which were written in the books. According to their works. And the sea gave up the dead. Which were in it. And death and hell. Delivered up the dead. Which were in them. And they were judged, every man, according to their works. According to their works. According to their works. Somebody illustrated it this way. That the sin you commit is the wood, the firewood that you are gathering. Upon which you shall be kept 
I'm bond. So, those that gather much tells how much firewood they have gathered. It will tell you the great flame that shall ascend to heaven for their wickedness in the day of their burning. That is what he illustrated. Yes. According to your words, the judgment of end time, according to your words, it is a blessing to you to come to a place where sin is chiseled out of you. Your life is made to change. You take a new course. Whereas women suffered from you. You can pregnant, you have pregnant 12 different women. And you burst for it, not knowing the misery that is ahead of you. You come to where you are washed. You are cleansed from sin. That is the mercy of God. That is the love of God. To deliver you from the evil ahead of you. I'm telling you. I'm robber. You have gone killing and stealing. Breaking into houses of people. The great judgment waiting for you. Don't talk about it. Whereas you have been praised, they shall lament over you. I say, hey, is it the end of armed robbery? So this is the end of stealing business. Is this? You yourself will shall confess. If had, had I known this, I would never have tempered with one man's money, any person's money, any person's property. I would have never done that. I didn't know it's so bitter like this. This is the world we're living in. It's an organized world. The spider, <laughs> in my office, I started hearing the cry of a fly, house fly. So what's happening? When did this house fly enter into this my place? Where, where is the noise coming from? I looked up and said, oh, it entered a spider web. And the spider was walking on it. I said, wonderful. So this spider has gotten food today. I'm telling you, it has entered into the spider web. That is a brother. It's better you be delivered now. It's better you cry for mercy in the presence of God now. It's better you come forth in prayer now than to exhibit pride that shall be doomed. The law of retribution. The law of recompense. The law of sowing and reaping. Luke chapter 6, verse 37 to 38. Luke chapter 6, verse 37 to 38. The Bible says, Judge not, and ye shall not be judged. Condemn not, and ye shall not be condemned. Forgive, and ye shall be forgiven. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, press down, shaking together. And running over shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that ye met with her, it shall be measured to you again. You might remember the case of the president of, Syria, of Liberia that was wicked, tormented people. And when his time came and they caught him, 
and started cutting him. They said, as you did to others, so it is your time. So it is your time. I watch. It's not common of me to watch. But somebody shot me briefly because I didn't know. He said, see now, there's somebody that uh, he was leading uh, uh, a gang in uh, Imo State. The governor was using him to kill others. Now somebody took over. Somebody has overcome him. So as he's talking, he was opening the, something for me to see. I, I saw two people talking together. The one was pleading, 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 pleading with him, talking, pleading. The one was holding his gun, pleading. Bah! He fell. You kill others like that. Do I regret seeing this type of thing? You kill others. It's your time. Why are you begging? So Saul is precious. The soul of a man is precious. Oh, to send a man into eternity that he does not come back to, to the world anymore is a hard thing. But you are doing it. He that killed with a sword shall die by sword. It's your time. You did it for others. And it is a law built into creation. Whatever a man sows, he shall also reap. The good that a man does shall come to him again. The evil that a man does shall come to him again. So, receive it. Though it's hot and bitter, you made the life of others bitter. That is how it goes. Judge not. That does not mean righteous judgment. It doesn't mean righteous judgment. This is wicked judgment. Evil judgment. If you don't do evil in judgment, you are sowing it for yourself. Judge not. Don't condemn. You just condemn without mercy. Without checking after truth. You just get him off. All these judges that condemn anyhow is a bad thing. They are alive. If you see the end, how it shall be with them. They will regret they were judges in the world. Yes. Forgive. Then you shall be forgiven. There is somebody that is the referee. There is somebody that is the moderator. God himself. He will cause it to be done to you. Good, he will cause men to reward you good. Evil, he will cause evil to, be ha to happen to you. There's a moderator that is watching. That's not the one that keep your soul. See? Does see not know? Your good works, although it is secret, your kindness, the mercy you show to others, does see not see? He does. He will cause men to reward you. Yeah, himself will reward you. He will send angels even when men cannot do it, angels will do it. For angels brought food to Elijah. He will send even the living creatures. The raven brought food to Elijah. That is God. Live well. That you may have peace in this life. Live well in your family. That you may end well in this life. Live well in the church. That you might end well. The church is in the hand of God. Yes. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure. Pressed down. 
and shaking together just as you go to major flower in the market. Just as you do that, God says it shall be done to you as a reward of your good works. It shall be done to you. He will cause me to give it unto you. The same thought, attitude you manifest, the feelings of mercy you show the Lord, to some, to people, the Lord will cause others in your time. It may not be in the exact manner, in the same, maybe it's money, money. No. He can, it's going to fulfill itself in another way. As the Lord shall choose, you will be recompensed. That is what he's saying. In Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 and 8. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 and verse 8. The Bible says, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, there shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. Later verse 9, let us not be wary in well doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. In due season, in the required season, there is season for everything to reap it for every crop. So for every action. There is a required season for it, for the result, for the reaping to come. So he said, don't, don't allow anybody to deceive you. Don't allow yourself to be deceived. You are doing evil, but you are moving forward. Ah, the, ah, the place is, no, I'm moving, I'm moving forward. I'm doing evil, but nothing is stopping me. Ah, so, oh, so there's nothing, no reward in evil. I, I don't. That heart is deceiving you. That heart is deceiving you. Oh, you say, hey, this man, he did evil. Nothing is happening to him, but he's moving forward. And nothing is happening to him. That is a deceitful reasoning. That's a deceitful reasoning. Because no man can break the law of creation. It is by it the world was made. In due season, he shall reap. In due season, you shall reap. Even Satan shall not continue forever. It's just for a time. In, in due season, Satan shall be no more walking among people. He shall be in the lake of fire. So, don't be deceived. Can you mock God? God, where, where, where is the thing you say you do against me? Where is the thing you say you do against me? I've been doing this thing. Have you done anything now? I, oh, you can move God. You're deceiving yourself. Don't take the mercy of God for granted. That he rather wants to show mercy. You think that he is not able. You think that he's a vain man like you that speaks vain. In due season, it shall manifest. In due season. As for you, keep doing well. He that so wet to the flesh, to the spirit, shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. If you keep doing according to the word of God, you will live, you will reap everlasting life. If you keep obeying the world, following the rules of God's word, you will reap everlasting life. 
star, he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, destruction, death, hell. Second Corinthians chapter 9 verse 6 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Can you see? You, you, are not, you didn't commit yourself to it. God shall not commit himself to you. The level you come is the level you receive. The level you are, do you take God seriously? He will not take you seriously. You think that you will not take God seriously and then when trouble comes, you run to God. Hey God, I want you to pray. God, don't think that God can be mocked. Don't think so. You are taking his mercy for granted. That you can live the way you want. And then God is the one that when you come, you just pick and go. Who is deceiving you about that? You will lift up your eyes, your hands to heaven. He will turn his eyes from you. Because you think the righteous God blesses sinners. Is it because he said, come, I will forgive you. That you come, instead of asking God, forgive me, I have sinned. Instead of confessing your sin, you say, God, you give me this. God, give me marriage. God, why? This year, if you don't allow this year pass, who are you talking to? You are talking to who? <laughs> It's because you are not seeing his face. Otherwise, if you see his face, you will be rolling on the ground. You will know you have entered into the hand of the everlasting God. So, that is what the word of God is telling you. Come in properly and do it. You will see God come in properly and take over you. But cut off percentage, the Lord shall cut off percentage with you. Am I the Lord that is near and not the God that is far off also? Draw near unto me and I will draw near unto you. That's what he said. Come closer to me I will come closer to you too. But go away. You will see me far from you. You will see me afar off. Determine our relationship. Whether I am to take you serious or not by your life. In Matthew chapter 7 verse 12. This is the summary of the whole thing. Matthew 7 verse 12. Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. The summary of what the scripture is saying. How you want to be treated, treat others. The good you want to do, do to others. There's something Job said. Job, when he was passing through his crisis, I think maybe because of the way the wife was, the carelessness of his wife, he might have been told now that your wife is uh, 
is not looking. Your body is smelling before your wife. Are you not sure your wife will go after other men? Job said, if I have slept with any woman, any man's wife, let somebody sleep with my wife. Because it's a law. If I have done this to any, any man to sleep with his wife, then my wife is available. What does that mean? You go about sleeping with people's daughters. You think your children will be free? You go about sleeping with people's wives. You think your wife will be free? They say, no. Except, thank God, if those people are children of God, if those people are disciplined over their lives, because otherwise you have released a spirit to walk, to pay back to your life what you're doing to others. That's the world we're living in. That's the world God created. It rewards a man according to his work. Now, how do you apply this principle? Apply this principle to yourself. See yourself being rewarded for good because of the good works you are doing. Because of the good life you live among people. Because of the good works you do in the church. Because of the, do the good works you are doing among your relations, among your brothers, among your sisters, you are doing to your parents. See that good is coming to your life because you have kindled a law. You have kindled a law. If you come before somebody with a smile, you provoke him to reply with a smile. There's a power in what you are bringing to provoke others with it. Come to somebody with a frown face, he will adjust his face to face you. What's, what's going on? Yes. Apply this principle to yourself in commitment to God, in commitment to the church, in commitment to the works of God, in commitment to Christian giving. To the support of the gospel. Apply this principle to yourself. Know that God rewards good life. God rewards hard work. God rewards loving kindness. God rewards good investment. Into spirituality. Good investment in spirituality. Good investment materially. Good investment in words and actions. They will pay you back. They will pay you back. Again, God rewards evil. Your evil will give you evil rewards. Now, if you are the person who doesn't laugh, who doesn't smile, your face will be looking hard. Go and snap. Tell them, tell them to take a picture of your life and then they give you a picture. Who are you going to sit inside? Are you going to see a smiling man? As your face is, so the picture, the camera will give you. You say, ah, but why am I like this? That's how you are. <laughs> That's how you are. The picture gave you, the camera gave you what you are. You say, hey, so I'm like this. Yes, you are like that. That is it. So, check it. God rewards evil for evil. In words, in works, known or unknown to others. Be one. 
your sin will find you out. Be warned, your laziness shall speak of you tomorrow. Yes. Your wickedness shall heap up wickedness to you. Yes. It shall become a great heap. So to the spirit. Labor in love. Let it cost you to serve God. He will give you costly blessing. Some of you doesn't cost you. Now, the reason why many will not come to this conference is just because they don't want to spend money. Is God going to give them treasures of righteousness? No. No. Because they are not ready to spend for it. They are not ready. Let me tell you, if they gave you maybe free gifts, they normally transport you free. The moment you get money, don't allow them to transport you free again. Otherwise, the person who transported you here has the higher blessing. Is that not so? He has the higher blessing. If it were not by him, you wouldn't have come. It means you were not even willing. But he made you, maybe overcame you and brought you. Congratulations goes to him. All the blessings you receive here, part will go to him. Then how much will be your own? Because he's taking percentage from you. If you are able to transport yourself, do don't be eating free and think that you will grow strong. When a child matures, he doesn't want you to put food in the mouth anymore. I can do it myself. That is where the pleasure of life is. It is a little child that you bring a cup of water to it to drink. But when the child is able to hold the cup, say, leave your hand. Why do you think you are enjoying free Free transportation, free this, free registration. Labor! Then God will pay you in spirituality. Strength will come equivalently. Why are you serving God without cost? You don't know that whatever a man sows, he will reap. Look at it in Second Samuel. Chapter 24. Second Samuel. Chapter 24. Yes. Verse 19. And David, according to the saying of God, went up as the Lord commanded, and Arauna looked and saw the king and his servants coming on toward him. And Arauna went out and bowed himself before the king on his face upon the ground. And Arauna said, Wherefore is my lord the king come to his servant? And David said, To buy the threshing floor of thee, to build an altar unto the lord, that the plague may be stayed from the people. And Arauna said unto David, Let my lord the king take and take and offer up what seemed good unto thee. Behold, here be oxen for bond sacrifice, and threshing instruments, uh, and other instruments of the oxen for wood. All these things that Arauna as a king give unto the king. And Arauna said unto the king, The Lord thy God, the Lord thy God, accept thee. When David came, because the Lord had been told him, make a sacrifice to stop the dead going on. He quickly ran to, the, to buy the field so that they can make sacrifice there. 
And the owner of the field said, what is that? I came to buy this field from you to do sacrifice for the Lord. Because to, to stay this dead. Eh? What? Buying? Take it quickly. Move. Here is all animal. Take. Here is firewood. Take. Move. I'm going to sacrifice to God. But what the devil said in verse 24. And the king said unto Arauna, Nay, but I will surely buy it of thee at a price. Neither will I offer burnt offerings unto the Lord my God of that which doth cost me nothing. But there are people here who avoid cost in serving the Lord. David is saying, I will not offer sacrifice to God on that that cost me nothing. You want everything cheap, everything free. You keep your money. Does not God see? Will you cheat God? Does he not know that you are not a mature person? That your love for him is not total. That you respect your money more than him. That you do not value eternal life. You do not value spirituality. That's why everything must be made cheap for you. Pay 2,000 naira to register. You won't pay. Ah, no, I won't pay. Ah, who, who, who will not do you anything. But that's not God, see? If you don't have, you don't have. But if you forbear to help somebody to deliver him from dead and said, I see it now, that's not he that looketh into the heart, understand? Does he not know that you have loved that money more than him? And then, you think therefore that you will heap great blessing as he is distributing it, every man according to your works. Every man according to your life. Some of these people who didn't finish their assignment, why didn't you finish your assignment? Let God judge you. I didn't have time. Who told you? Who told you that you didn't have time? Who told you that's not God? See, when you waste your time in the internet, you waste your time in business, you waste your time in traveling, waste your time in other matters, and, have not, and didn't create time for God. It's now you're running up and down. Hey, give me more time. That's not God. See, who are you mocking? Am I deceiving? Whatever a man sows. So, my brother, this is the principle of life. Change your life today. Actually, ask God, sister, that now I know what that beggar was saying in the motor park. If you give me, it's for yourself. If you don't give me, it's for yourself. And now I understand. Today, I will change my life. I'm going to do good. I'm going to sow to myself in spirituality. And God will hear you. God will save you. A new life will begin. Let's rise up upon our feet and go to God in prayer. Stop weakness. You are heaping them for yourself. Stop backbiting and criticism. They shall criticize you. You will suffer backbiting because you are a backbiter. The good a man does is for himself. The evil a man does is for himself. Do good and have good in your life. But the future. Ask God to do a new thing in your life. Ah, as we wash. Pray you will do good. Promise God you stop your evil. Let God change you. Tell him to change you. Who told you that you are wise?
Is an evil man a wise man? A wicked woman is a wise woman? Open your mouth and really plead with God. <clears throat> Let them live well in the family. Let them live well in their marriage. Let them live well in the society. Let them live well in the nation. Let them live well in the church. Oh Lord, divine. Father, let them sow good seed. Ah. My God! You have shown us whatever a man sow and that shall he also reap. You have shown us whatever a man sows he shall reap. In Jesus' name. Spirit of God, come upon your people. Hey! The Spirit of God, the Spirit of righteousness. Because these people do righteousness. That you may reward them. Your word says, Say unto the righteous, It shall be well with him, for he shall eat the good fruit of the land. The good fruit, the works of his hands follow him. The works of hmm. Let change come. Let righteousness come. Let, come. Let evil be destroyed in the lives of your children. Evil be destroyed. All those people captured by the devil. We break that evil. Break that power. Set you free. Go and be good people. Go and be righteous people. And enjoy the life of righteousness. Reap good reward for your soul. And live for your children. Thank you, Father. Worship. Worship. Ah. Jesus. Jesus. Do. Do your miracle. Change upon the people. Let there be miracle in your life. Let the Lord change you completely. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Deliver yourself! I love you because I've done evil. Call upon Jesus and let him change you. And brother, continue doing righteousness. My sister, continue to do righteousness. Righteousness pays. Righteousness pays. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The message you have just listened to is a production of Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, 
production and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, messages or inquiries, contact us on 0816-902-3948 or 0805-683-4323. You can also reach us through our email address, Holiness Revival Movement at gmail.com God bless you. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through Him might be saved. Hallelujah. Jesus, I believe in you. You are my Lord and Savior. I believe in you. You are the living Savior. Jesus Christ.